Yes. We're basically full, absolutely full. About to hit the uh, overflow point. I checked the back of that. It's coming out fine. It's coming out as fast as it possibly could, and yet. We just can't move it quick enough. Anyways, next year when I build a proper system, it won't be a trouble. And I'll have the generator running at this point, trying to transfer as much as I fucking can into big green tank out the back and everything else. And, um, yeah, that'll be one of these uh, things, you know. In doing all that, you know, I might be able to, if you keep getting days like this, you know, I I think my consumption of uh, bringing in outside water would drop to about half of what it is. Uh, I go and fill up about, what is it, like 10,000 litres every six months, and I reckon you could probably get 10,000 litres um, in the winter to spare to go in there and probably still fill the IBCs down there at the same time. Um, I suppose we'll find out when the time comes. I've worked out it's about half an inch of rain to fill an IBC um, off this roof, so... So, yeah. It's how to get stupid. <laughs> Try and drink the water out of the puddles. He's just drinking out of there before. Anyway, I'm... Uh, Trying to crank the wood stove. I've got a bit of corn here. I'll probably cook up, and uh, I am soaked to the skin. I've got another mushroom too out of my mushroom patch, um, and uh, yeah, I sort of need to dry myself off a little bit. Don't know that we get much at all done today. It probably wouldn't have been a stupid idea to have bought some acrylic stud adhesive um, to be able to. <laughs> just go ahead and basically start plastering in here, but that means I've got to bring the plaster in through the rain. Uh, one of the things I'm thinking of, it's over there, and I don't know if they've got any nails, they need a bit of cleaning up or whatever, but I might move a bit of stuff around. I'm in the fridge room now. Just a little on light glow in there on the fridge. And uh, solar panels and all that crap out there. I might move some of the stuff around here to get ready to put palings on this wall. Because I've got the palings over there. And, oh yeah, using the wagon, I can reverse it right into the uh, machinery shed where we're storing them all. And not even get any wet, not even have to walk through the rain. Uh, and then I'll try and bring them back in here. The only thing is, I'll just have to go from like, just the grass out there, up to the front door with them. And that might be about it. Um, but this was going to be one of the inside jobs, plastering the other walls and just putting palings on uh, the smaller parts of the wall. And I might just go ahead and uh, actually have a go at starting on all that. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't do much work the rest of the week either because, in all honesty, um, this is supposed to go the entire week stop on Saturday then start again on Sunday and it's now Tuesday morning so uh, yeah maybe I should have a shot at all that sort of stuff um, holy smoke that's a lot of smoke <laughs> this is a blasted construction pine you know you, you burn the cypress pine you get no smoke you burn construction pine and she's looking like like that <laughs> And the wind's not, there's, there's no wind pretty much, so it just sort of swirls around the damn house a bit <laughs> before it disappears. And, uh, yeah, looks like this is starting to catch up a little bit. Anyway, I suppose I'll do that. I'll get to uh, working all these palings out and moving stuff around, getting ready for it. I know I've already got the nails for it and all that. And, um... Any real thing I need, which I can actually, yeah, I've got a lead comes through on the bathroom door. You guys probably see this little white one that's coiled up on the bathroom door. That actually comes all the way from the generator. 
uh, and I've got a circular saw and if I whack these palings on and they're too long all I need to do is string line, uh, chalk line it rather so you chalk line it and then you get the circular saw plug it into the the uh, lead over there, I've got another couple of 10 meter extension leads and uh, then just go up the side with the circular saw and whatever you can't do with the circular saw I can finish off with the reciprocating saw but reciprocating saws vibrate a lot with circular saws ain't so bad and uh, so yeah bit of luck I might even be able to get on with that uh, today yeah that's gaining on us uh, we've that's uh, emptying out rather she's uh, stopped raining I've got to have a look online and see when, what size these should be because I think another week or two I've got to harvest a few of these ones here. There's a couple over there that are looking like they're getting closer to. I actually fertilised them a bit the other day. But there we are, 19 mil, three quarters of an inch. So that's pretty good going for uh, around here anyway. In Western Australia, it used to rain really hard, and you'd get bloody two or three inches in the space of an hour or two. But and here we go again. The driveways all flooded out. You can see down there. But that's pretty good to be able to get um, three quarters of an inch in this amount of time. It's around here. They prefer if it doesn't come real hard and heavy because it'll just wash off um, and because it's clay it'll just just disappear or pull up like it seems to do a lot because we're on reasonably flat ground until we get off past the trees there and uh, then it's really steep the idea being that if it rains slow it'll soak in and if it rains too fast it'll just flow off over the edge of the hill and or into guttering or whatever and go into a river and you won't really um, the soil won't get damp underneath the ground it'll be wet for the first I don't know four inches or whatever six inches and then under that it'll just be dry as chips during the 2009 drought people would literally dig four foot down into the ground and it was dry the entire way and um, yeah that drought being so recent and being so severe sticks in people's minds I mean I remember that winter of 2009 it rained for a total of five seconds and I can remember because I was on a forklift you know and I <laughs> remember one guy in uh, on YouTube saying that he had a friend in Texas and it, it didn't rain for 90 days oh, they got no rain for 90 days oh it might be a drought oh hell I said forget it we had five seconds of rain the whole year and it didn't rain for nine months straight 90 days is nothing you know not for this country there's a lot of uh, places in this country where it doesn't do anything all year and then you get like five days where you'll get rain and in that you get flash floods and there's old dry creek beds which people go oh this is nice there's no trees in here you know there's not soft ground we can put our tent pegs in washes them away and drowns them and yet the whole year they only got rain for five days of the whole friggin year yet people die in flash floods, it doesn't even make sense welcome to the Australian Outback, that's what happens out there um, but yeah, here it seems to rain a fair bit slower which is good because it soaks into the ground and um, then it means the grass has got plenty of uh, moisture under the ground and particularly the trees, you know, the roots are deep enough that even if the surface dries out um, you know in the start of summer or whatever it doesn't really matter because you've still got a bit of that moisture under the ground but 
But in 2009, it was crap. People were digging four foot, six foot, and there wasn't, everything was dry and dusty, even, you know, deeper under the soil. But um, anyway, I'm flipping a bit wetter than I'd like to be right now. It's soaking into me too, so uh, yeah. Alrighty, just cooking some corn. It's probably nearly already cooked. This rain has merrily continued on. Uh, 21 mil at last check. Um, I just put my finger over the mic because there's a little bit of a breeze. I'll show you. I got the palings, so. Uh, it's got the 60-40 uh, split rear seat, fold that down, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, good there. There we go, pussy. Time for some fun, eh? So I'll probably just... Uh, Shuffle a bit of this around, put this somewhere, maybe move the canned food out of the way. Just dump them all in here. Have to move the socket sets or something. Just around the corner and uh, dump it all in here. Then have a bit of a rearrangement inside here. You know, I've got about four or five tape measures. I'm buggered if I can find one. All I've got is a blooming rule, like one of those foldable ruler things. Um, yeah, got to shuffle a bit of stuff around in here and then we can probably make a go of uh, starting doing palings. They're, <laughs> they're tongue and groove palings actually, but a lot of them with them and, well, a little tongue might have made it and some of them are splintery and there's quite a few knots. And It was actually where my grandfather put an extension on the house and uh, you know all that this uh, wall got changed or done something anyway but it's actual it's proper pine it's not like some bullshit plywood or anything like that but there are quite a few knots it is a bit chipped and shit so i'm gonna have to go through and, and uh, pick and sort what there is there and and you know whatever's left over I might take a, a few bits back i don't know if he even wants it he probably doesn't um, and what's really splintered and screwed up will probably eventuate in the uh, wood stove pretty quickly. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, I noticed when I was over there, my father had a lot of off cut to just shit that was only like about a foot long. It's like, God, blind. If that was me, to be just all in the bloody wood stove without batting an eyelid. Like, it's good to start up kindling though, because it's really fine stuff, sort of thing. Um, I think I've got rid of most of the nails off this wall anyway. I'll, uh, I'll eat a bit of this corn and then we'll get to um, starting on all these shenanigans. Alrighty. We're uh, slowly meandering away here. We've got, uh, well, I've been eating <laughs> for about the last two hours on and off. Um, and we've got a few boards coming up here. <laughs> yeah, we got a little packer. As uh, you can probably see there, it's like uh, three eighths of an inch, uh, which was to obviously make the beam uh, thicker, assumedly to match the other ones. But no, it turns out actually it's not. I've got bracing stuck over the top of the blaster thing, which is steel strap there. Um, I can't really get it out very easily. And uh, I assumed it was to line up with this beam on the end here. No, it's actually not lined up with that. So they sort of go straight and then they curve when they get to the main beam at the end here where you would assumedly mount your architrave for your door. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> a bit of wiggling and shaking and banging and carrying on. But, but that's just the nature of uh, dealing with proper uh, tongue and groove. Uh, boards and uh, yeah you just 
so why it works unless it's brand new and the wall's perfectly straight and blah 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 and yeah anyway when they milled all this stuff I am reliably informed by uh, the group who owns a steam powered sawmill um, that they don't they'd never actually measured all this timber when they um, dealt with it all they would actually do the whole lot by eye which explains why all this house is three and a half inches or three inch beams none of them are sort of all quite the same it's all a bit of a ridiculous mix um, and a lot of the original stuff here is actually tongue and groove palings but they're a bit thicker than this stuff I'm putting in stuff I think so anyway <sighs> There's the old ones there. Just got a bit of paint. And you see there's no paint, that's where the old architrave was. There's bloody nails through everything. They're obsessed with nails, this family. Absolutely obsessed with it. I couldn't work out if the tongue goes down or up, and then I had a look at this and it's part of the tongue there. I actually just split that little end piece off before. So it seems as though the tongue, you see it again there, uh, actually goes down. Uh, so that's how I'm doing these. These ones I'm doing are about half an inch thick. I think the ones above me are uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Who knows? But um, anyway, not too much overhang, probably about eight inches or something. And I'll keep banging and wiggling away there. Um, instead of using a rubber mallet, I'm actually using the cushion handle on the end of the claw hammer and just hitting it with the holding the actual hammer head and hitting the actual um, handle on the top of the the uh, groove to uh, try and get it to go in without actually cracking it it seems to be working all right the other thing is because I've got that overhang you can actually hammer the end where the overhang is anyway because it's like eight inches or so so that's all just going to end up being cut off and uh, most likely kindling uh, for the wood heater or the wood stove or whatever, uh, just sort of. Most of these are pretty good condition. This one here, I had trouble getting in. They've actually broken the entire side of one of the groove. The groove there, the internal side snapped off. Um, a lot of, as you can see, is knots and odds and sods, and they got a little uh, brads through some of it. They've been firing a brad nailer into it, which brads are not nails there like a bloody glorified pin <laughs> they're very fine nails a lot of this has got a bit of um, dust on it and uh, yeah I'm just dusting her away and um, trying to find any brads that are stuck in the edging of it and uh, trying to clean the groove out with a little brush here and yeah, it's going to be rather slow but anyway the hell else am I going to do go on uh, get wet or something this is <laughs> this never ends this rain not today anyway there's the air built up in it that I was saying about it's, uh, anyway just slowly meander on just looking at the old wall here you see stud there on your right, on your left, that's your, your cross bracing. Goes up on an angle. You see the top of the paling there, the bottom of one paling. There it goes again. Notch the wood right in. Let's see if you can see it here. There you go. And notch the old wood in there. take this bit of cross bracing what you can see there the back of that is uh, the back of the outer, outer weatherboards all hardwood everything's completely hardwood um, in this here there's uh, a couple of nails you can see um, there's a bit of a mix and match in the floor of actual old style really old style blacksmith nails the rectangular ones and the uh, modern lemon cast ones or however they've done it. And, uh, 
Yeah, there's a tongue on that one there anyway. Some of these when I got here, especially on the wall I'm doing now, uh, on the opposite side, it, they there are some there but they're afraid as hell. And see so sheep got into this place and for a long time there was actually no one in here for basically 20 years. And uh, doors were open or just missing altogether I think. And there was a foot deep where the sheep shit in what is now my bedroom. And uh, in the kitchen and the room where the solar fridge are, he actually replaced all the floors. But in my bedroom and the other room where I keep all my tools and all the boxes and nails and stuff like that, um, that's the original floor. And uh, anyway, a lot of these palings are actually sort of frayed. And I think sheep had come in here and sheep being sheep, particularly the males, sometimes they uh, fight and other times, especially if a dog comes in or a fox comes in or whatever, they decide it's time to go and if there's a paling in the way, in the way of them, well it just, just goes straight through the bloody thing and uh, that's probably why a lot of the lower ones are all smashed out but the higher up ones are fine but uh, I've replaced those with plywood since then, I got rid of all the ones that were crap um, didn't try and, you know, <laughs> try any stupid tricks of trying to hold together ones that were splintered. I just got rid of all the ones that were splintered and replaced it with plywood. And uh, now I'm, of course, doing the other side with uh, palings. Uh, I'm onto the longer ones now. Um, and I've got to cut off about, shit, about a metre off the end of each one of them. But uh, anyway, I'll do that one more. It's getting hard to see, I've got to keep moving the damn lamp around. I'll do that one more, and um, then I've got to do like a little thin slip one, which I might have to, it might be a bit of a circus. <laughs> I might have to go through some of my uh, odds and ends and my trims and bits and pieces and, and see how I can do that. There'll be a lot of, uh, a lot of delicate procedures trying to get that little flat bit unless I can find something that's about the right shape anyway. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll move the lantern out and I'll um, clean up this last board and put it on and we'll work on the uh, the last little thin slits. Probably only going to be about an inch thick after I put this next board on. And I'll work all that out tomorrow and uh, trim off the, uh, the back side. A lot of these are actually stuck on an existing wall, so you've got all these like glue spatters or whatever. And it's been like, I think it's been on drywall, like plasterboard, because it's actually paper. And then, you know, there's this glue sort of uh, in other parts where the paper didn't hold on. But yeah, so it's almost like as though I'm pretty certain it has been slapped on an existing drywall. Um, it's only exceedingly thin, the glue, so, you know, as you can see, like, there's not an issue there. I just slap it against it anyway. This, well, that's the plywood there I was talking about that I put on the opposite side, um, where the palings were splintered. Even here, the plywood's... <laughs> I never quite trimmed it back with that stud. It's still about half an inch off, just for the last blooming foot and a half or so. So, uh... Yeah, I don't know if I can do this with a reciprocating saw. It might be sound nice, but the trouble is the vibration. Like these nails, by the time I get through the board, I'm only using 30 mil nails, which is like an inch and one fifth. And these are half an inch thick, so there's not that much grip when they get through. So I'm a bit funny on using a reciprocating saw. I think I'm going to have to where this steel bracing is, but for the rest of it, I'm going to try and use a circular saw. And uh, circular saw, you can't get right down the bottom, but I can just trim the bits I can't do with a reciprocating saw, and it should be all right. You get the general idea. It's funny, I'm using a high intensity discharge torch. I don't believe it is cutting back the flipping brightness of this. This thing is like a set of car headlights. Somehow, it's got a great ability to cut back the light levels, but not tone them up on this stupid ass <coughs> phone camera. But anyway, 
There we go, she's all done. Um, little piece along there. That <coughs> was a little bit stuck on the top. It, it's part that's out of my grandfather's house, actually, that was stuck as like the last little piece. And I'll be stuffed black and blue if the bastard doesn't perfectly fit against that other one above it. I mean, look at it. Talk about custom made from head to toe. And it's friggin' ridiculous. It's absolutely perfectly fitting in there. It is actually a groove, so there's a little bit of the tongue on the end of this upper one just at that end there. Um, you're getting a better look at the wall now, aren't you? Almost. There we go. There we go. Holy the palings and little pussy cat. Hmm. So anyway, I just come down uh, near this line of nails here. And you see the studs just sitting inside there, and then we'll be good. What do you reckon, Blackie? Uh, Tim again? Hmm. Are you gonna claw it now that it's up on the on the wall, or? You're going to give it a good sniff first, aren't you, hey? <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Trimmed off some little bits of expansion foam that were probably going to be in the way. Uh, I sort of originally done all this corner piece here, almost like a um, bit of edging. <laughs> it was not perfectly shaped, so just put expansion foam in and then just trim the expansion foam. It's uh, my blackboard, my chalkboard on this wall. That's where my shopping list always ends up. Anyway, <coughs> that's that.